Hello and welcome to my tutorial on free fall and projectile motion. So now we're going to talk about free fall. So all objects in free fall have the same acceleration. And Galileo once discovered or disagreed that all objects would accelerate towards the ground at the same rate. So objects with different rates dropped within the same height should hit the ground at the same time and not only that, but he thought that the reason this object didn't do this was because of the effect of air resistance on different objects. Now at the time Aristotle thought if that two objects of different mass were dropped from the same height then the heavier object would always hit the ground first. It's not true because Galileo proposed that air resistance was key to this. So Galileo eventually had his theories accepted and this is the physics that we know today and his experiments tested this so there's a way of writing it down mathematically um, and it is g it is a vector g is a vector quantity and it's an accel it's, it's an acceleration so the magnitude of g is always 9.81 on Earth, and it, differ, it differs on the Moon and Jupiter and lots of other different planets, but I'll talk about those in another tutorial. The only force acting on an object in free fall is its weight, and knowing that weight is mg, its mass times the value of g, 9.81, is very, very useful as it gives us our force. Objects can have an initial velocity in any direction and still undergo freefall as long as the force provided the initial velocity is no longer acting on that object. So in the equations of motion you can just replace the A with a G. So um, if we now if there's no initial velocity, so we if we substitute u as zero and g equaling 9.81, we get v equals g t v squared equals 2 g s s equals half g t squared and s equals b t over 2. So a is equivalent to g, which is equivalent to minus 9.81. As when you're in free fall, you have to go downwards, and you take upwards as positive in physics equations. Um, and the initial velocity and downwards. We'll look at this example. So, if someone threw a sto stone off a cliff, so here's my craggy cliff here, down at the bottom right corner, and it gives a downward velocity of 2 ms minus 1, and it takes 3 seconds to reach the water. How high is the cliff? So, if you know that u is minus 2, and g is minus 9.81 as t and t is 3, you need to find s. So if we use s equals ut plus half gt squared, we should get, if we go to the next page, dum -de -dum. now if we look, minus 2 times 3 plus half times not minus 9.81 plus 3 squared it was minus 50.1 meters. So the quick cliff is 50.1 meters high but the object, the stone, it falls at a downwards direction so you must put a minus on the front of your number. You can just do the normal calculation to prevent, prevent, prevent yourself from mixing up your minuses but it's best to remember when an object is in free fall, you put minus 9.81 in your calculations. And we're now going to think of horizontal and vertical motion separately. So if I fire a another object, um, the book I've got here says a scale model of a TV talent show presenter. I'm not going to say any names with a velocity of 100 ms minus 1 from 1.5 meters above the ground. How long does it take to hit the ground and how far does it travel? So it acts as a particle, that means 
it can behave like a particle and it can be a projectile and the ground is horizontal and there is no air resistance whatsoever um, so we're taking u to be 0 and a equaling to g which is 9.81 just like in previous examples that I've just so shown you and s equals minus 1.5 meters u equals 0 and a equals g so vertically we can rewrite s equals half g t squared to make t equals the square root of 2s over g and then we can write 2 times minus 1.5 all over minus 9.81 to equal 0.55 seconds so the model hits the ground after 0.55 seconds now knowing that it is 0.55 seconds horizontally we can now calculate the horizontal motion and it's not affected by gravity or any other force because it, so now it moves at a constant speed so we could just use speed equals distance over time this is how you write it in the et Excel exam board on the formula sheet um, then we can be ready to define distance so d equals s times t and then vh is 100 ms minus 1 t is 0.55 seconds and a is 0 I'll just make that s look more like s 0.55 seconds q is zero so s h is vert the horizontal velocity times t 100 times 0 0.55 which is 55 meters so Sharon froze she absolutely despises this television presenter model and she fires at 55 meters I think that's quite a feat for a model, but hey, um, the, po the point is that you can find the distance by rearranging the speed equals distance over time formally. Um, so we'll look at some questions now, just to get your your teeth around what they ask for. So Jason stands on a vertical cliff edge, throwing stones into the sea below. He throws a stone horizontally with a vertical velocity a velocity of 20 ms minus 1 and, and it's 560 meters above sea level how long does it take for the stone to hit the water from leaving Jason's hand use g equals 9.81 find distance of the stone from the base of the cliff when it hits the water so I'll give you a 5 second pause pause the video and have a go ok hopefully you should have um, had a go and now we'll look at the answers. So S is minus 560 meters as the object is going down. And G is minus 9.81 because the object is going down. U is always zero. And T is, we don't know. S is UT plus half AT squared. Minus 560 equals zero plus half times 9 point, minus 9.81 times T squared. And then square rooting T, we get T equaling squared root to 2 times minus 560 all over minus 9.81 to equal 10.7 seconds which is approximately equal to 11 seconds so now we'll go on to part B um, finding the distance of the stone from the base of the cliff to when it hits the water so V equals S over T the velocity equals speed over time speed over time um, S equaling is equals B times T and then 20 times 10.7 equals 214 you technically use B equals U plus A T but for now we're just going to use the other, the other method, the method that I've just shown you with the speed equals distance over time because it's a lot easier and you can't necessarily use it because U might not be zero. Um, so, um, to 
the next one now. Robin fires an, ar an arrow into the air with a vertical velocity of 30 ms minus 1 and a horizontal velocity of 20 from 1 meter above the ground. Find the maximum height from the ground reached by his arrow. Use G equals 9.81. Use G equals 9.81 and ignore air resistance. So we're looking at the answers now. Minus 9.81, 30 and 0 for V. V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. 0 equals 30 squared times 2 plus, like, plus 2 times ni minus 9.81 times 5 because the object is going downwards. 900 is 2 times 9.81S. Like an S. And an S could equal 900 over 2 times 9.81 and that equals 45.9 meters. Or it's roughly 47 meters to the nearest meter. Why did I say if you ignore the one meter stand he was on then it's actually 46 to the nearest meter but since he was standing on the one meter stand you have to add that extra meter on. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you found this helpful. Um, we'll look at displacement time graphs and velocity time graphs when you join me on our physics journey.